Today we'll learn the final lesson for section 2 of chapter 1, the early Christian church. To log into our book, lodausd.net, our website, then Clever, from Clever, Cengage, and then enter your student email account with the same password. And from there, the navigation is from the left side. Unit 1, Chapter 1, Section 2, Christianity, Lesson 4, The Early Christian Church, pages 30 to 31. The Early Christian Church. Now let me remind you to the essential question of this chapter. What was the enduring power and legacy of the Roman Empire? As for the objective of this lesson is to understand the development and formation of the early Christian church. Being different can make you a target for attacks. Early Christians were violently attacked, but their courage and determination ensured Christianity's survival. Well, they did not just survive, but they actually thrived. The main idea of this lesson is from a small group of persecuted Christians or believers, Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire. Roman leaders punished Christians for refusing to worship the emperors. This persecution only got worse in AD 64 when the emperor Nero blamed Christian for a great fire that swept through Rome. He had thousands of Christians put to death. Just being a Christian became punishable by death as a result of worshippers were forced to meet in secret. They buried their dead in hidden underground chambers called catacombs. They were hunted down, treated less than a human being. However, things changed in 312. Christian persecution had reached its highest point when an amazing change began. How it changed? Well, the story goes like this according to some account. Well, according to Constantine. On the eve of a battle for control of the empire, a young Roman leader named Constantine, or sometimes Constantine, well, I think it's Constantine, prayed for help. He believed his prayers were answered with a vision of the Christian cross. Well, according to him, the vision led him to paint a symbol on his soldier's shields, a cross symbol. Constantine went to win the battle, and as a result, he immediately put an end to Christian persecution. Well, according to his historians, he was very generous to his supporters. They suggested that he could afford to be so generous because he robbed temples and used tax money for his own purposes. It is also clear that some of his supporters gained favor by faking their conversion to Christianity. Well, if you're following the news, most politicians are like that. They will fake their conversion or they will, they will fake their membership to a church so that they can um, obtain favor from the leaders, religious re leaders, regardless of the church, regardless of the religion. For sure, as a leader, he accomplished a lot. But in relation to our topic about Christianity, he built churches in the Roman lands and declared Sunday as the Christian day of rest. As you may know it, obviously, even today, Sunday is a no-work day or no-school day for many people. You see how vast is the influence of the Roman Empire. However, it's important to note that it was not Constantine who declared Christianity as the state's religion or the empire's religion, but it was Emperor Theodosius, who officially closed all the temples of the Roman gods and made Christianity the official religion. Well, that is the official religion of the Roman Empire during this time. To provide you with more context or background about Constantine, here's a clip from the Smithsonian Channel. Everyone else, out. The commitment Constantine made on his deathbed was an act that would catalyze the rebirth of the Roman Empire. I'm running out of time. I can feel it. Constantine rose from his deathbed on the outskirts of Nicomedia to be baptized. This final act would send a message to all citizens of Rome. 
Constantine, who'd given the empire a new capital, now gave it a new kind of life. In the words of Eusebius, Constantine was gifted with the divine seal of baptism. The time has come for me to have the blessing of the seal, which confers immortality. I shall from this time prescribe to myself, prescribe to myself such a course of life as befits his service. After baptism, you're purified of your sins, but just as importantly, you've committed not to sin again. Many early Christians left this act until the very end of their lives. Constantine, who'd done so much that his religion could regard as sinful, was washed of his sins just in time. I don't think that Constantine's Christianity was cynical. This was the religion, after all, that told you that the meek would inherit the earth. And here we have the illegitimate son of a barmaid who had ended up ruling over a million square miles. Is it wrong to be proud of one's achievements? I am proud of the magnificent churches I've built. I built the new Rome and Constantinople. I know now that I am in the true sense blessed that now I have been shown worthy of a mortal life, that now I receive divine light. Constantine has lived very well. Salvation is yours, Emperor. Constantine died hours after his baptism, sealing his greatest legacy. Inspired by Constantine's example, at his death, an estimated 40% of the population were Christian, and all but one of his successors were baptized in the faith. By 380 AD, Christianity was declared the official religion of the Roman Empire, an empire that would endure for another thousand years. So that's the relationship of Constantine and his accomplishment in relation to the Christian church. Eventually, Christian practices were communicated to the Christian churches throughout the empire and beyond. Around AD 64, he built a church in the name of St. Peter, and this uh, is St. Peter's Basilica. So in time, the Bishop of Rome became the most important bishop or pope. He was seen as the leader of the unified church known as the Roman Catholic Church. I'm assuming that some of you are, or your family is even a member of the Roman Catholic Church. So that's one of the many contributions or legacy of the Roman Empire, even in religion. Because the Roman system of government is so organized, it influenced even the church. So the church became like a military system. So there is a pope, it represents like the commander in chief. There are generals and of course there are foot soldiers. These are, these are the workers or missionaries of the church. I guess that's the reason why people call churches as organized religions. Well, is that a good thing or a bad thing, Mr. Ramos? Well, it depends. If the system is being used for helping others, so therefore it's a good thing. If it's just a means to get uh, money or resources from poor people, then that's a bad thing. Well, not just get money, but use that money for personal things. Now it's time for the review and assess questions. The first one, reading check. How did Christianity became the official religion of the Roman Empire? Number two, describe how was the leadership of the early Christian church organized. Finally, number three, draw conclusions. In what way did their persecution help unite the Christians? What made them stronger? What made them united? So those are the last review and assess questions for section two. Don't forget to turn this in because this is the last lesson for this 
section about Christianity and the Roman Empire. Go ahead, go back to our Google Classroom and find the review and assess slide or the review and assess question for section two and answer lesson number four.